I say good morning. Good morning. All right, the Lord is good. Yes, he is. This morning's message uh it's talking about your comfort zone. Let me hear everybody say my comfort zone. Sometimes we're going to have to step out of our comfort zones. And this morning, I'm definitely going to step out of my comfort zone. And I'm going to get started by interacting with you all. Brother Stanley, if you can come on this side for me. Have a seat over there on the front row. Sister Carla, front row next to Uncle Stanley. Tiffany, if you can come up here and sit on the front row for me. Not on the other side, right here. Sister Ramsey, if you can take Bishop's seat right there for me. You already moved out your comfort seat, so I'm going to leave you right here. If you two ladies, if you are, come on, come on, out your comfort zone. Go up there and sit right behind Tiffany. And please forgive me, but I'm just doing what God asked me to do. If you all can come sit here for me. Remember, you're stepping out your comfort zone. Just remember, you're out your comfort zone. If you two can come take the front seats in the front for me. Brother, if you can come and sit next to Elder Clyde. If you can come up front for me. I want you to go sit next to Sister Collins. This back row, if y'all can do me a favor. Come sit here for me. Come on up, friend. All right, if you can sit right behind Elder Clyde for me. If you can take a seat next to her once she has a seat. It's on a real quest. You don't have to. If you can just come up front and take another seat than that seat you're sitting in. You can pick any seat up front. All right. So pretty much everybody is out of the seat that they chose to come in and sit in where they felt comfortable, right? I didn't mess with uh, Brother Billy and his wife because they have the baby, and I didn't want to cause too much <laughs> un uncomfort for them. But I want to, first of all, thank everybody for being obedient and assisting me with what God has for me to give out. So give yourself a hand. I want everybody to stand and turn to Genesis 12 and 1. When you have it, say, I have it. Genesis 12 and 1, and it reads, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will shew thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. You may have a seat. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, 
I pray and ask that what you have asked me to do, O oh Heavenly Father, I pray that your people receive your word, dear God. I pray that the uncomfort becomes comfort to them, O oh Heavenly Father. I pray that everything that you ask me to do, O oh dear God, that they receive it, O oh Heavenly Father, as love, O oh dear God. Lord, I, I pray and ask that they just receive your word, O oh Heavenly Father. And the word that we receive on today, O oh dear God, even myself as I receive what you have for us to learn, O oh Heavenly Father, I pray and ask that we go out into the world and use it, O oh dear God, so that we may be, bring more people unto you, O oh Heavenly Father. I pray that the word that you give us on today, Lord, that allow us to live more freedom, oh dear God, in your word, dear God, according to your word, oh Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray and ask that it allow us to have joy in living in you, oh dear God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. All right, so now that we all are, are out of our comfort zone, I'm going to read comfort for you, okay? The meaning comfort is a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. Okay? It's a state of physical ease and freedom from pain or constraint. Now, some of us, when we come in, it's not that we don't want to sit around certain people. When we get in, we just want to sit in a certain area where we feel comfortable. So your first two times when you come, you may find a spot, you may move to the next spot, but once you get to that certain spot, you're like, okay, this is for me. This is where I'm going to hang out. I'm going to listen to the word of God and can't nobody touch me. I ain't going to bother nobody. Ain't nobody going to bother me. I'm good, right? Now, when we get to that point where we good, now that's where your freedom from pain or your freedom from discomfort because you don't have to worry about what the person next to you is thinking of you or is saying about you because you have already gained that comfort. I know they're not going to tap me and say, hey, good morning. The Lord loves you. I know this person is going to come in and sit and do the same thing that I'm doing. Now, if you choose to sit by another person, that person might just be so jolly. Be like, hey, girl, how you doing? What's up, brother? Everything all right? How was your weekend? Man, how's the kids? And you may not be in a talking mood right now. But you got some people, they'll just let you be. But sometimes we have to be out that comfort zone because you need to be introduced or you need to be approached at certain times when you don't want to be approached. You have to be, you have to allow people to approach you sometime with God's grace, with the blessing that God is trying to send to you, with things that God is trying to say to you. You may not hear it all the time if you're sitting by or if you're sitting in a certain area or if you're staying at home and you don't go visit that auntie that you know that auntie is just going to tell you some good stuff that you need to hear. You're just going to stay at home. I'm not going over there. But you ain't got nobody else to go to, but auntie never has nobody to visit her. You know why? Because she's always telling the truth. She always pull out the Bible. She always has a word for you. But... You won't go feel that discomfort of her telling you what God is trying to tell you. Right. So, when we go back to Abram, just think about what God was doing for him. He was pulling him out of his comfort zone. When we get pulled away from our kindred, when we get pulled away from our mothers and our fathers, there's a little discomfort, right? You start feeling like, man, I don't have nobody I can lean on. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do? But what you have to do is you have to understand. God is in control. God is always in control. But at the same time, God has given you this sense of, of urgencies. He has allowed your hearts to have desires, right? I'm getting somewhere. There are desires in our hearts that we all have. There are things that we want to achieve. There are things that we want to have in life that we want to retire with, that we want to actually pass on to our children, but we don't know how to get there. Or the things that are out there that we want, we try to say it's too painful to get. Oh, that's too hard. School is too long. 
School is not comfortable, people. I, I, I mean, those who have finished college, who have went through college, you already know. It is not comfortable. There's no comfort in school whatsoever. I don't care how long, how much time you say, oh, I love to learn. I love new knowledge. I love anything. But school is painful because it's things that you don't understand, things that you haven't heard before, and they're trying to get you to, t they're trying to get you to understand it. So, what I'm trying to get us to understand is, in life, there's going to be some uncomfort, some discomfort in our lifetime. There's going to be some discomfort. If you want to start a new business, you have never been a business owner before. It's going to be some discomfort. You're so used to coming to a job to somebody saying, okay, clock in, go to your desk, read your email, go get your coffee, go back to your desk. Now start whatever your process is. That's a routine. The routine brings freedom, right? Because there's nothing new. But anytime the supervisor brings in change, what do we do? Man, I can't believe they come here, they trying to do this. Why would they want to do this? Why are they trying to do this? Why is this happening, right? Think about this. I am a Christian, right? You all are Christians, right? We believe in Jesus Christ, right? 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Before we were saved, we were living a life that we were comfortable with. Before we were saved, we were living a life to where we can actually turn our faces up, we can curse a person out and have no remorse. We can do things to where we didn't even care about it. But when we gave our life to Christ, we became new. And when you become new, it was uncomfortable. When you decided to say, I'm going to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, the people that are Christians, they started looking at you a little different. That's how we are as Christians. It's bad to say, but that's how we do sometimes. We look at people in a different way, but we have to change that. We have to become the person that accepts the new person. When something is new, you don't get it right off, right? Whenever you had a new job, the reason why I relate the job part to it is because that's something that we all can relate to. When you get a new job, you learn something new, you make mistakes, correct? Okay, why not as a Christian, we can't make mistakes because we are new. And as we are new, the person that has been a Christian for years, that has studied the word, why can't we open the arms and say, hey, it's going to be all right. God is going to forgive you. Instead of saying, you know, I can't believe he did that. He just gave his life to Christ. He just gave his life to Christ and he went back and did it again. Come on, it was new to him. But we got to show him what God told us to do. We got to show love. So if you're going to show him love, guess what you do? You bring him back in and say, you know what, that's okay. We're going to try it again. So this, was, this is what God says about it. If we think about our lives, everything that we do and those who have been Christians for a long time, we do not live a sinless, free life. We sin every day. So why should we charge it to our brothers that are new? Our sisters that are new? We have to have a different way of thinking. The Bible tells us to ask God to renew our minds. If your mind is renewed, the hatred you have towards your brother is old. It's in the past. So if it's renewed, news brings about freshness. Who loved the new car smell? Fresh, right? I haven't smelled it in a long time, but it's coming. You know what I'm saying? But that's freshness. So if something is renewed, when your brother or sister approach you, it should be freshness and not feeling of guilt or not feeling of shame to come and approach you after something, even if they have fought you. 
even if they have done something against you. We have to have that renewed mind every day. But you know, some of us, we choose to hold on to it. Because it, it may seem like it makes you strong, but it actually makes you weaker. When you hold on those things inside, it brings about weakness to the body. It brings about sickness to the body. But when you're able to forgive someone, there's no more stress holding them back. So if there's no more stress holding them back, there's no pressure on the organs. There's no pressure on the brain. There's no pressure on the heart. There's no pressure on the body, period. You know what? You ease up and you hold on. You say, come on, brother, let's go. That's in the past. Let's do what we got to do. Let's move forward. Being a Christian is about moving forward, right? Being a Christian is about walking as Jesus walked, right? I mean, I know we're not going to be perfect as Jesus, but we should be striving to be perfect. We would never hit that perfect. We would never become close to what Jesus was. But he led an example. He walked an example of what he wanted us to follow. Half of the people, people that Jesus met, people that Jesus healed, they were new to him as a man, but in spirit he already knew. But the people that he met in the flesh, they were new to him. And all he had was to give. He wanted to give healing. Why did he not give them like five? He could have gave every person he met, he could have gave them 20 mules. He could have gave them 13 camels. He could have gave them all kind of oxen. He could have gave them everything, right? He could have gave them all materialistic things or whatever it could have been, whatever they wanted. He could have gave it to them. He could have said, Father, make it for him. But he didn't. You know what he gave him? He gave him salvation. He gave him love. He gave him healing. Why did he give him healing? Because if a person is healed, if a person is healthy, guess what? They can make their wealth. So he gave what they really needed. He gave them love. He gave them health. I got a question for you. When you feel energized and fully alive, what strength and traits do you exercise? When you're feeling good, when you're happy, when nothing is bothering you, when you feel like everything is, is yours, when you feel like you have all power in your hand, what traits do you exercise? Let me give one volunteer. What do you do? Cook. That's what I'm talking about. Anytime you're feeling good, come help me out. I'm always looking for volunteers. But give me somebody else. One more. Baking cakes. Give. Encourage people. Now, Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthen me. We take that as normally we'll say, you know what? I'm going to try to achieve this next goal. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start my own business. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be the best manager I can be inside my workforce. That's what we use it as. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Excuse me. But when they say I can do all things, do some of us think that I can be the most forgiving person that is ever in the world. I can be the most giving person that is ever in the world. I can be the most lovable person that is ever in the world because I can do all things. Do we decide to say, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the most lovable person that there can ever be. You know what? I'm going to go by every person that feels like that they are down in the world. I'm going to give them encouragement. I can do all things. If I can do all things, I can be that person. So guess what? I'm going to continue to go and tell people, I love you. I love you. I love you. God loves you. I love you. I love you. You know what? It's going to be okay. So remember, we're stepping out of our comfort zone. So our comfort zone is, you know what? I can do all things. You know what? I can be the greatest manager there is in my job. And that's what I'm going to be. You know what? That's okay. Be that. But that's your comfort zone because you've been saying it for a long time. And guess what? You are the best. That's why you're the manager. You are the best. That's why they pay you the money that you have. But why not choose to be the best at something else? Why not be, choose to be the best at a person that God sees 
and that people see that Christ is in you. I'm going to be the best person that people, that people see Christ in me. I'm going to be the prime example of what a Christian should be. You know what? Christian makes mistakes, so you can still be the best person. We all make mistakes. It's okay. God is going to take care of us, but don't continue to make the same mistake. What circumstances bring out the strongest character traits? Excuse me. 2 Timothy 1 and 17. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. The spirit of fear. What comes with fear? Failure, right? We always think about failure. I'm going to fail. They're not going to say, hey, I accept it. They're not going to say, hey, you know what? You're great at what you do. Let's do it. They're not going to say, you know what? Man, I believe you, man. I'm going to trust God and I'm going to give my life to Christ. You're afraid that they're not going to say that. You're afraid that they're going to say, look, man, I don't want to hear that right now. Not today. You know what? God ain't done nothing for me all my life. That's what you're afraid that you're going to hear. But why be afraid? God didn't give us the spirit of fear. That's just one time that you actually introduce, and that person that you're introducing yourself to is going to be 15 other Christians come right behind you and do the same thing if we have that mindset that we can do all things in Christ. So if you approach that person, guess what? It's another Christian going to approach that person because the Spirit is in us and it leads us. And if you allow the Spirit to lead us, we're going to continue to talk to people that need Christ. Just because they didn't answer the call that you said that God is calling them, guess what? Somebody else is going to come through. We're just icebreakers, people. As we continue to break the ice, sooner or later, God is going to choose that word and they're going to choose to accept Christ. So don't stop. I'm not saying approach the same person 15 million times. Approach that person once and somebody else approach that person. Stop being afraid. Don't be afraid. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. When we think about our jobs, when we're thinking about what we want to do in life, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of the process. When you was a little kid, you weren't afraid to start walking because it wasn't in you. You weren't afraid to fall off the bed because it wasn't in you. You didn't know. You just said, I'm getting on the floor. I'm getting from the spot where I'm going, I'm getting on the floor. But you didn't know how you was going to get there and bloom, bloom. As a kid, there was no fear in us. Half of the time, some kids, they'll walk out in front of the bus if you don't teach them that, hey, this is what the car can do to you or this is what the bus can do to you if you walk in front of it. But there's no fear in them because God didn't give it to us. We gain the fear over time as we grow as adults to know the circumstances of what could happen. If you know the circumstances and you have witnessed the circumstances, then you start to believe, okay, this is what possibly can happen. But God didn't give us the spirit of fear. But he gave us power. What do people seek in life? Rich people. They already have money, so what do they want now? They want power. In which we all have power. But a lot of rich I just want power. I want the power to know that I can do anything that I want to do. God is already telling you, you can. If, you're, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you can do that. If Christ is in you, you can do anything that you want to do. So the power is in you. It was given to you. It's in all of us. We just have to choose to use it and apply it to what we want. Of love. Come on now. He wouldn't tell us forgive our enemies. He wouldn't tell us to love our enemies if we couldn't do it. Half of us, we don't even love our brothers and sisters. So the strongest, thing, the strongest thing he did was when Jesus told us to love our enemies, he took us to the far fetch of what we can imagine. Can you love your enemy? It's easy to love your sister and brother because you know you're connected. But Jesus tell us to love our enemies. Come on, that is totally out of your comfort zone. Loving your enemy? Man, ain't no comfort in the world in that. But if you have Jesus Christ in you, there is comfort. If we are believers, if we are Christians, there is comfort. We just have to choose to allow it to be comfort. We have to give it to God, and then there's comfort. And a sound mind. 
a sound mind. Make right decisions. Understand what's going on in your life. That's what God has given you. He has given you a sound mind. The stress and worries and other things is what brings in the confusion. The lack of understanding that God is in control is what brings in the confusion. Sometimes greed is what brings in the confusion. Because you're not comfortable and you're not thanking God for what you have. And you want more, but you're not thankful for what you have. There's a difference between being thankful and wanting more, but then being unthankful and wanting more. Those are two different things. <laughs> new opportunities in life. Don't be afraid to take new opportunities. Don't be afraid to answer those opportunities. Don't be afraid to even see the opportunity. Some of us see opportunities and we close our eyes. We turn our backs on opportunities. Because of what? We're afraid to fail. Challenges to succeed. Some of us are afraid to challenge ourselves to succeed in life. What am I saying succeed at? I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about businesses. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about succeeding in introducing people to Christ. I'm talking about succeeding in showing love to the people that God has told us to show love to. I'm talking about succeeding in loving our enemies and loving our brothers and loving our sisters. Loving people of other race. Man, we have this so messed up, not just Christians, but everybody. Right. It, is, it is in us, it has been taught, not directly, but it has been taught by the way that the earth turns. It has just been taught by the people about hatred against a person in another color, a person of another race. They start off by teaching us they have a different understanding of life than what we have. That's the way it's taught. But you can either consider them a brother or you can consider them as an enemy. Either way it go, you have to love them. That's what God told us to do, right? These are instructions from Jesus. In my Bible, that part is red. In everybody else's Bible, is that red also? Love thy enemies? So this, this is coming from Jesus. Love thy enemy. Love thy enemy. He didn't say you have to bring them in and feed them every day of your life and give them all your money. He just say love them. What do you, how do you love people? You pray for them. You pray for their well-being. You pray that they succeed in their endeavors. That's how we show love. We have an opportunity To change but it has to start with us the parents and then we have to teach our kids a different way of looking at life I know when Martin Luther King was teaching about racism and teaching how to love people and teaching how we should adapt in life a lot of people looked at him differently a lot of people looked at him as why would you just be talking about things we should be fighting I'm not saying we shouldn't be fighting but what I'm saying is that we should be having a different way of looking at life. We should be having a different way of, if, if the Bible is what we say we live by, then we need to show more love to Indian and white people and Hispanic people. And we shouldn't relate to bad, all bad drivers or Hispanics. I'm just saying, I, I hear it. You know what I'm saying? This is what, what is being said. People say this, oh, they can't drive, must have been a Hispanic person. That's bad to say. Why would you even label a bad driver like that and just put it all toward that race? <laughs> a man wearing a dark mask, sagging pants, robbed the store. Oh, it was a black person. Because they the only one wear sagging pants? And are they the only one robbing? But I'm just saying, that's what they said. Man, it had to be a black guy. His pants were sagging. He couldn't make it over the fence. But we're stereotyping. But my thing is, 
we got to come back and we got to start looking through the eyes of Christ because he's in us. Unless you told him to take the back seat and you allow your flesh to look at everything. The Christ I know, he's not willing to take the back seat. That's why we're actually warring within ourselves because our flesh is warring within the spirit that's in us. The spirit is trying to tell us to do good. The spirit is trying to tell us to do right. We have to do better as Christians. We have to do better by doing what God has asked us to do. We have to do better by loving our people. This may not have been the message that some of us have came to hear, but this is the message that God has told me to give. Because the, the churches are falling or separating because we are not allowing Christ to be the forefront of what the church is supposed to be. That's why it's falling, because we have too many attitudes. That's why it's divided, because too many people want to be in control. Too many people don't want to let go and don't want to let Christ lead the church. We want to lead the church. And that is the problem. People are looking at us and they're not seeing Christ. They're not seeing Christ. Sometimes it's so hurtful it makes me want to cry because I know the person that I am. And I say that I am a Christian. I believe that I am a Christian. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. But when people label the Christian as people that talks about their own brothers, that talks about their own sisters, I'm like, who are we? Christ is the, God has the greatest power that there is. And if we don't allow Christ to take the rightful position in the church, in us of who we are, then that's us saying that the power of Jesus Christ is weak. I can tell you, Muslims, they'll die by their word. Whatever the word says, they'll die by it. Whatever the word tells them, they'll do it. Now you have some that may go against it, just like us as Christians. We all are not bad, but there's some Christians that go against the word or that we believe in. But if we believe in the word of Jesus Christ, it should be so much love in this world, I tell you. If we as Christians believe in Jesus Christ, I'm talking about this should be over flooded with love. Churches should be blossoming. I'm talking about just growing with love, not growing with money, not growing with just people, but I'm talking about love. I'm talking about people that come in that better have a shirt on Two, three months later, they got, I don't know, too many shirts that they don't even need. They can share with somebody else. When you receive Christ, you grow. When you receive Christ, you receive power. When you receive Christ, you receive knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If you can't buy it, somebody is going to give it to you. That's what it is. That's what we do as Christians. That person shouldn't have to come in with the same shirt on every day and they've been coming for the last month. If anything, if he didn't show any growth himself or if she didn't show any growth herself, we should show growth in ourselves and give them something. And don't go tell 15 other members that we did it. Allow the growth that is in us be shown. Allow the power of Christ be shown. Man, that guy, man, so he came in last week. He, he, he was foul. She was, I mean, you couldn't stand it. But now, look at him. Clean. Nice looking, nice shoes. He must got him a good job. Probably ain't got a good job, but I'll tell you something. Somebody's helping clothe him. Somebody's helping him to understand that God will give, God will provide. But if they sit back there and the same thing, God ain't gave me nothing. God ain't, show, and the people ain't gave me anything neither. I'm not, telling people, I'm not telling you people, give your last. I'm not telling them, give them something that you know you need, but I'm saying if you have a little extra, give it. I'm not saying give to me when you already know I got 20 shirts. I don't need it. Somebody else needs it. And don't just take it to the box that's on every corner. No, take it to somebody that you know. Give it to somebody that you know. Hey, I just want to give you, it was, it was so many times I was approached, I can fit it, but I got me some new ones, man. I, I got me a couple new ones I would wear, but look, I'm going to let you, you can have them. You know, my wife bought some extras, I'm going to go ahead and let you have this. 
She ain't been no about no extras, but guess what? I'm giving it anyway. If we're going to be Christians, we have to live as Christians. If we're going to be Christians, we have to love as Christians. Allow God to take his rightful place in us. Allow Christ to take his rightful place in you. Step out your comfort zone. Amen.